today you're gonna learn all about operations in the burst programming language Yay! and previously you learned how to work with variables like so today we're gonna do some new things and expand upon this knowledge so go ahead and open up your unreal editor and we're gonna go to verse verse Explorer and create a brand new verse file Ooh! so we're going to right click on the content folder here create new verse file and we're gonna call this one lesson zero underscore zero two and we're just gonna click create like so now this video builds upon knowledge in previous videos so if you haven't watched those you're gonna need to watch those as well too especially if you're a brand new programmer so I'm gonna click the verse button and it's going to open this up in Visual Studio code and I just drag this open here I'm gonna click lesson 02 verse here's what we have the same thing that we had last time okay so we're still working with an RPG that's the idea we're building a game but what is the point of having data if we can't do anything with it it's one thing to just write variables on the screen it's another thing to actually do stuff with it so let's do some stuff with some stuff <laughs> all right var player total health okay equals or sorry colon int equals 100 so this time we're going to do player total health var enemy attack damage of type int equals say 11 and one more thing to keep in mind as we're going along do write all of this out don't just watch write this code out it is critical to put your fingers on the keyboard and actually type okay critical absolutely critical follow along pause the video if you can you've got to write it out repetition is critical okay so enemy attack damage that's the attack damage that let's say an enemy might do all right and we'll say var player defense of type int equals five maybe there's like a defense modifier before you get hit uh, your defense your shield your armor takes some of that damage away we'll say var special attack damage of type float equals 65.0 and var base attack damage of type int equals 20. now we're just building out a character this could have been anything this is what I thought would be kind of cool you know you can think about your own properties that you might put on a character in an RPG game or really any video game for that matter but these are some ideas that I had and thought about that I was like well what can I do with these things uh, in the game so we've got our on begin here which we know is going to print our code to the screen with these print statements but we want to play around and have some fun okay so first things first is what happens if a player gets attacked okay that means the player is going to lose some life what kind of mathematical operation would we use if someone is losing their hit points losing part of their life uh, if you said subtraction then you were correct so what we're going to do is we're going to say set player total health and how do we get this to reduce uh, based on the attack damage well what we can do is use basic arithmetic just normal normal math stuff that I think comes in around seventh or eighth grade some uh, basic like pre-algebra and I say basic don't get offended if I say basic I didn't learn a lot of stuff either and I stink with math so when I say basic math just know I mean like elementary type math seventh eighth grade you can learn it still even if you're really old like me you can still learn it okay uh, I don't even know how to multiply and divide fractions okay like so I'm in the same boat with you I'm gonna say player total health so I did the equal sign player total health so wait make it equal to itself no take the current health and minus okay we're gonna say enemy attack damage okay set player total health equals total health minus enemy attack damage so if total health is 100 it's going to take 100 minus enemy attack damage 11 uh, I'm going to change this to a zero just so I don't like do bad math in my head and say wrong numbers and you guys are like hey what an idiot dude it was uh, you know like supposed to be like 91 or 43 uh, so enemy attack damage what would I expect player total health to be 
Well, I would expect it to turn out to be 90, right? So set player total health equals player total health minus attack damage. Well, why didn't I just, you know, say, you know, minus attack damage by itself? Well, we have to we have to put the health in front of it again. You see this right here? We can't just say set this equals th or minus this. We have to have an equal sign here, okay? We can't just we can't just do stuff like that, okay? Um, so we want to take the current value, the current variable here, its value, and subtract the enemy attack damage from it. So what I want to do is to test this out, I'm going to say print, and we'll go ahead and say player health. Use the curly braces for string interpolation. Player total health, like so, put my quotes in there. I'm going to copy this, control C, and then after we set this, I'm going to print it. And you know, one more thing just for fun, we'll say print enemy attacked player for those curly braces. And one thing we haven't done yet probably is put words on the other side. So enemy attack player for something damage. And in the curly braces, we are going to say enemy attack damage. So we're going to take that value and print it to the screen and then print some more words after that. I'm going to save it, control S, and I'm going to go back to the editor. We're going to go to verse, build verse code, and now what I need to do is actually delete this device that's currently here. This is our, our script from the first lesson, but we don't need that anymore. So over here on the right hand side in the outliner, I'm going to find my script here. You can also search for it up here, and I'm going to just delete it. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to my content browser. And again, if you've forgotten how to get into this, okay, you can click the content drawer down here. And I'm going to grab my new lesson two. After we compiled our code, it gave us a new device. One thing to point out is that only works because we are inheriting from creative device. If we did not have this in here, you would not be able to drag that object into your world. So lesson two. I'm just gonna drag that little weird computer thing in there, okay? And what we're going to do is, because we changed the editor here, we need to push the regular changes, not just the verse changes. We are up to date, escape, start game. If I press tab, player health was 100, enemy attack player for 10 damage, player health is now 90. Excellent, escape, escape, end game, alt, tab, Cool, here's our code. We literally just wrote code. So if you actually had an enemy in the game, like a 3D model, and it goes jaw, and then it hits the bounding box of the player, you could actually write code to subtract damage, just like you did right here. Like, you would literally write code just like that. I would write code just like that to modify the game. So, pretty cool, right? Even though this is basic stuff, like that's a line of code you would actually use in a production game, which is pretty awesome. So we've printed the player health, and we use subtraction, okay? We use the subtraction, the minus operator on here, okay? These are called operators, and they operate on things. It means they do things, so we're subtracting here. Pretty awesome, and maybe you're wondering now, what else can we do? Well, we can do a lot of things. We can do subtraction, division, multiplication, uh, there's built-in math functions, uh, you know, square root and all kinds of fun things. Pie, if you like pie, like apple pie, cherry pie. No, the 3.14 pie, that's in there too. All right, pretty awesome. Now, I don't like how this is kind of working here because it's a little bit verbose. Why do we really have to put that on there again? Like two times, that's kind of long. Let's make it a little bit simpler, okay? What we're going to do is we're gonna say set player total health, okay? Minus equals, ooh, now it's getting interesting, enemy attack damage. So this code here is doing the exact same as this code here. The only difference is they made it a little bit easier for us. It's saying, hey, take the player total health, the variable that we're working with, that we're about to set, take that, okay, and then subtract that from enemy damage and then stick it back in there, okay? 
so we don't have to have that extra step. Same exact thing. If it's confusing, I understand, but it's doing the same thing, just grabbing the data without having to actually write the word again, okay? This minus equals operator here, okay? And you can do the same thing with addition if you wanted as well too, like so. Pretty cool. But we've got this interesting uh, player defense variable up here, okay? Let's use that. So how can we use it in our operation? Think about it. How can I have the enemy attack the player? We're programmers, we're solving problems. How can I have the player or the enemy attack the player, but before we take the damage, before we first use the defense, we've got a defense of five. So we first take that away from the damage. Okay, how do we do that? You wanna try? Pause the video, try writing that code right here in this line of code, figure out how to first reduce the damage before you take away the player's health. Did you do it? No one ever really does, but if you did, good job. So player total health, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do order of operations with parentheses. Enemy attack damage minus player defense parentheses. This is just like the seventh and eighth grade pre-algebra math, order of operations. Uh, what do they call that? Foil? F-O-I? I don't know what it's called. PEMDAS? Parenthes it's PEMDAS? PEMDAS? Parentheses exponents? I don't know. It's, it's that one. Um, I don't even know what FOIL is. Uh, okay, so here we go. An enemy attack damage minus player defense. What's going to happen here is because we put this in parentheses, before it runs this operation here, it's gonna do this one here. So what we're gonna do is print the player health after player health uh, after defense and attack. That's really long, I know. Uh, okay, so we'll print that here after our order of operations and let's see what happened. Verse, build verse code, Push verse changes, escape, start game, tab. Health was 100, we did 10 damage, but this time we applied uh, the defense on the second attack, and now look, we're only brought down to 85, so our code worked, all right? I'm gonna, and you can also end the game here in the editor, back to our code. Pretty cool, so we just did order of operations. It's very important, okay? Almost every single game that exists uses math like this, basic math, seventh, eighth grade math, pre-algebra. I'm just gonna call it pre-algebra. Uh, every game is gonna use that pre-algebraic math uh, and these operators and order of operations, every single game, okay? This is core, important stuff you have to learn. Awesome, so we just did that. Now, what if the player finds a health potion on the ground? What can we do with that? Well, let's create one. Let's create a brand new health potion. I'm gonna say health potion, okay? Health potion of type int equals 20. Health potion of type int equals 20. You're like, but wait, Mark, whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't put the var keyword in front of it. Totally wrong. Well, this is what's called a constant. A constant cannot change, cannot be mutated, okay? It means that we're telling the compiler that this will never change. Once the, the data's in it, the data is in it. And you make a constant by simply omitting the var keyword. Just take it off, and it's a constant, and it can't be changed. So if I'm like, I'm gonna cheat the game and say set health potion, you know, to equal 1,000, 10,000. What, you can't, it's a squiggly. It can't be assigned to, okay, because it's a constant. So it makes sense to use a constant here because I picked it up off the ground and I can't change it. So let me tell you a rule, pretty easy rule. If your data is going to change, make it a variable. If your data will never change, make it a constant, okay? Don't just do var because you're lazy. Do the correct uh, type of variables or constants, okay? Use the proper keyword. In our case here, our health potion. Now, how do we give our player some health? They just picked it up off the ground. Wanna, wanna write the code yourself? Give it a shot. I'll write it now. Set player total health. We could do 
plus set player total health plus health potion, or just use the plus equals operator here and say health potion. Okay, take the current health and add the health potion. Why wouldn't we want to do this? Because that's actually going to subtract our life. It's going to bring it down to 20. It's going to say, hey, make our health equal to the health potion. No, no, no. That would be called a logic error, okay? So this is not a compile error. This is a, a logic error for your game. The logic that you wrote is wrong, okay? And those are okay to ship because, uh, you know, your code your code's good in the compiler's uh, mind, but in the player's mind, it's wrong and you're gonna need a one-star review. For your terrible health potion, your sneaky health potion, that's like the green poison mushroom in Mario. All right, health potion, excellent. And of course, we can print that and I would expect it to work. I'm not gonna print it, but you can if you want. We're gonna say health is now equal to player total health. And we'll print that there. And so in our case here, we've got down to 85. And so this would be 95 and 105. Hey, we're, we're up, not bad. We're doing pretty good. All right, health, now what? Well, how about we use our special attack? Let's do some different types of operations here. How does that sound? Maybe some division, multiplication, who knows? Uh, we'll get a little bit crazy here, but let's go ahead and grab our special attack damage. In fact, let's think about this here. We're trying to solve a problem. So in our case, think of it like Diablo. Uh, you know, they have this like paladin guy and you click your special attack and it goes bam, bam, bam and does like three hits or five hits. So in our case here, uh, you know, ours would just do three hits, okay? Uh, and so, let's do that now. Let's say special attack, let's say zero one. We're gonna do the very first attack, for example, of type float, okay? We're gonna use a float here because we're gonna use division and division can have uh, remainders. And uh, you can also do division with integers, but you can get errors or failures in that, and we're gonna cover that later, okay? So we're gonna say float equals special attack damage. I'm gonna say divided by 3.0. I'm using the 3.0 because that's how you use a float. If I just said three, that would be an integer. And since I'm working with floats, it expects me to work with a float. So our special attack damage, okay, is 65, all right? and what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna divide it into three, just, just for example's sake here. That would be like the first hit, boom, boom, boom. So our special three hit attack can only ever deal as much as 65 damage. So we have to divide that into three attacks. Does that make sense? And so we'll just do the first attack here. And we're gonna say print special attack zero one, special attack zero one, like so. so We've taken the, the uh, attack damage and we've divided it by three, okay? So if we do that on a calculator, if I say, let's just say six, 65 divided by three, my calculator says 21.6666667, okay? So let's save that here. We're using the, this uh, slash here, okay? This forward slash to represent division. I'm gonna save it, go into my editor, Verse, build verse code, push verse changes. Escape, start game. All right, special attack here at the bottom, 21.6666667. All right, it worked. Our division worked. And it stored our entire um, uh, division operation in this float here with its remainder uh, behind it, which is, which is actually really kind of cool. Um, other programming languages uh, work differently sometimes. So back over here to our code. So yeah, our attack damage, uh, we divided. So congratulations, we've done division now in our code, which is awesome. If you're doing the game, you might do two other attacks, attack two, attack three, and then you might actually attack the player with it. You know how to do that already because we've done this code up here. So feel free to pause the video and do three special attacks in a row to take the player's life. We're not gonna do that right now. Let's go ahead and do some multiplication. So imagine now that there is a power up, okay? And you pick it up off the ground and it makes you super strong for like five seconds. Or maybe it adds some, some strength or attack damage onto your normal attack. So I'm gonna say 
power up, we'll call it multiple. I could have just called it a power up, but we'll call it power up multiple uh, just to be clear of what's happening. Of type int equals three. Okay, so we pick up this power up off the ground. It's like a magical energy drink and it's going to give you three times damage. Okay, three times damage. All right, so let's create a new variable called temporary attack damage or temp attack damage or a new constant. Okay, whenever I don't put the, the var keyword in front, it means it's a constant. So we're creating a constant here. Special attack was a constant and power up multiples a constant and health potion is a constant. Okay, and we're gonna say if type int equals, and what do we wanna do? We wanna take the player's base attack damage and make it three times stronger. So we can use multiplication. Base attack damage times, we're gonna use the asterisk here, times the little tiny star times power up multiple. So here's our temporary attack damage, which the normal attack damage, 20, so I would expect this to be 60 if I printed it. I'm not gonna print it, but you can, okay? Multiplication, so we've multiplied two integers here. And just so you know, you cannot multiply two different things of two different types. So if I say multiply uh, base attack damage times special attack zero one, oh no, we can't, you know, we can't do that right now. We can't actually convert the integer or multiply the integer with the float. So I'm gonna put this back to our power up multiple, okay? We'll learn more about how to work with floats and integers and how to cast them to different types later on. Okay, power up multiple. And you can print that on your own, but what we've done here is we've started working with some basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, and a few other things. If you control click on some of these types here, by the way, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. The, the code editor has issues sometimes. But if you can control click on some of these, it'll take you to the code or over here on the left hand side of your window, you can just click the verse digest and you, you can read through this and see all the things that are available. So for instance, if I control F to search for pi, okay, pi float. So there's some built in math functions available to us like pi or clamping between two numbers. Clamping would have been a good one to use if we wanted to keep our um, our health over here. See our, uh, you know how we got over a 100 health? Well, what we could do is we could actually use the built-in clamp function, which constrains the value between A and B, and then, um, you know, will give us, give us uh, the value that we're looking for uh, without exceeding over, you know, 100. So there's some tools available for you here in the verse.digest. Uh, all kinds of math stuff as well too for that you can use later on. Um, anyway, lots of cool stuff in there available to you. Feel free to check it out. If you're having a heart attack already, don't look at that file. It's gonna, it's gonna actually make you die. Uh, so we're taking this slowly here, but that's great here. And now we're done. And what you're going to do is an exercise. By the way, one more thing. Haha, <laughs> for those people when I say they're, they're done and they skipped off to the next video and didn't subscribe, now they're gonna miss this part. I'm gonna go to view on my editor here and go to word wrap. That will keep all of your words on, this, on the screen so it's not cutting off here. So your exercise is number one, create a variable for an enemy's HP. Two, create three special attack variables that reduce the enemy's HP. Create one special attack and that must use multiplication Okay, and oh, sorry, one special attack must use multiplication, one must use division, and one must use addition. So those three special attacks, you need to, however they work, you've gotta use multiplication, division, and addition on those three different attacks, whether you're dividing it in half, maybe it's, maybe it's a bad power-up special attack, or maybe uh, it's more powerful, whatever, you gotta use those different operations on there. Compile it, get it to run, print it up, have fun with it, and you can print your solution here to the exercise in the Discord channel. Okay, so that's it for now. So much more to come after this. Stay tuned. If you didn't know, my name is Mark Walbeck, and you can watch the next video in this series right here. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you can know when the next videos are released.